The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt, Blood and Wine, John Geralt the Rivendell's Adventure Continues, released 6 years, 6 months and 23 days ago, and like a true wine connoisseur, I decided to finally try it out after letting it air for a few years. Hence the name, Blood and Wine. As we start our adventure in this video, I noticed that my horse refused to sprint for some reason. As an expert on horses, I'm suspecting this was because Roach was drunk after a night of heavy wine consumption. As I made my way to my next waypoint, I noticed that the next objective read La Kik La Kagia La Kagia Fo, which surprised me as I don't understand French, and I thought CDPR would have fixed these translation issues by now. After some riding, I encountered these little fellas called foglets, but as I don't have a clue to what a foglet is, I just proceeded to call them foggies. However, I don't think they appreciated the nickname I gave them as they turned out rather hostile towards me. Rude. Look at those cute little helmets they're wearing though. So cute. After dealing with the cute little foggies, I heard a strange howling coming from nearby. But then it hit me. This is likely because of the yearly furry convention that's in town, and as we all know, the French are famously known for being furries. I decided to leave the furries to their activities and not long after, I encounter another foggy that's hostile towards me. I also spent over 60 minutes on this part of the video to come up with something that rhymes with foglet, but the harder I tried I just happened to forget. My journey continued and I happened upon this charming little house in the French countryside that had a lot of spoons hanging around. And the first thought that struck me is that the person living here probably hasn't been to the dentist in some time. Upon inspecting this nice little abode, it became clear to me that whoever lived here was a connoisseur of spoons. And as I am an aficionado of wine myself, I immediately found a kinship with this collector of ladles. As I entered the facility, I noticed three skeletons below the kitchen's dinner table and so, one fact struck me and shook me to the core. These people obviously didn't know how to use spoons. Upon further inspection of the place, it became clear to me that the spoons came in different shapes and sizes whereby I decided to hide in a basement closet to lure out the individual that I felt such a strong kinship to. A few hours later, the individual in question finally showed up and I got to witness a master working at her craft. The art of making soup. And to make good soup, you need a good spoon. Or a scoop. It's really up to you. Being a gourmand of the fine arts that I am, I proposed to help her with her consommé. And so, together, we made a soup so good that it literally turned this master of broth, this inventor of potage, into a beautiful young woman. As the hero of the story, I didn't rest on my laurels and so I went on my merry adventure through France. Not long after, I met with my bestie Regis. Regis is a hipster vampire that only drinks vegetable juice. He also suffers from extreme hair loss, presumably because he's vegan. Regis told me of something he wanted to do, so together we traveled to something Regis referred to as an ancient vampire estate. And after we arrived, he made me put him in a cage and chain him up, whereupon I started suspecting that Regis had a fetish for this kind of thing. As a non-judgmental person, I didn't mention my suspicions as I didn't want to hurt his feelings. Others that wanted to join in on the fun started to show up, so me and Regis left the party after dealing with a rowdy crowd. Not long after this, I saw footage of Regis' stepbrother, twice removed, Detloff, who I've come to refer to as Deddy, on how to make friends in France, which was a thrilling demonstration of another culture's customs. In order to get a hands-on demonstration, I took it upon myself to look for Deddy himself, and so I happened upon this really ugly kid that might have an idea of where I could find Regis' stepbrother, twice removed. Ugly child or no, I couldn't let these three peasants harass the ugly young man, so I proceeded to beat the ever-living shit out of them, and being the good Samaritan that I am, I then turned them over to the local authorities to hang. I then proceeded to get shaken down by the ugly kid I had just saved, and paid him over 400 gold pieces for saving him. Good times. Me and Regis then broke into Daddy's house and found that he's an avid collector of toys. This interest in children's paraphernalia made Daddy's name make sense at last and so I made it my top mission to help Deddy as best as I could. I would petition for a change of name for Deddy, from Det Laugh to Live Laugh. So I made my way to the Empress to petition for a name change for Deddy, and once there I was surprised to see that the Empress wasn't alone as none other than Asmongold was there as well. 
Unfortunately, Asmongold and the Empress didn't heed my words and wanted me to help them with something else entirely. And so, without any expectations whatsoever and purely because of my good intentions, I accepted the Empress's request and rode with her to an actual vineyard to try some wine. Unfortunately, I didn't get to try the wine for myself, and so I must say that I'm very disappointed with CD Projekt Red for clickbaiting me into this entire thing. The story must go on, however, and through careful deduction, we realized that the wine wasn't wine but actually spoiled milk. So the Empress gave the farmer an earful and sent him away to be beheaded, as is custom in France. You know what they say, spoiled milk in the barrel, your head is in peril. After again meeting with Asmongold and the Empress, I found out that I'm the most wanted bachelor in the entirety of France. And so, with this information, I ventured out onto the streets where I met the famous Frenchman himself, Borat. Unfortunately, I couldn't stop to chat as I was on my way to an ice-wide shot party where the Empress would be waiting for me. Remember to like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for part 2 in my journey through blood and wine. As always, ne bois pas de la tournée.